Ginger, you are hardly dressed for spelunking. Professor, what do you say? She's rubbed elbows with the wealthy, managed to thrive in the jungle, and lived the life of a star. Now, am I talking about Tina Louise or her most famous character, Ginger Grant? The similarities are pretty surprising. But what did Tina really think about Gilligan's Island? The vessel that made her a household name and the castmates she got stranded with? The answer, I think, is pretty heartbreaking. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, with these details and more, including the very personal reason she stepped away from acting and where Tina would want to be stranded herself. If you enjoy our deep dive, please give it a thumbs up to help the video circulate and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a deep dive. Now, without further ado, let's revisit Gilligan's Island and the life of Tina Louise. What nationality is Tina Louise? Tina Louise is an American girl who lived the American dream, beginning with humble roots and climbing high. She was only four when she had to contend with a broken household, but she found some solace in her drama class. In fact, our budding star was originally named Tina Blacker, and it was her drama teacher who found out she had no middle name and suggested she add Louise. Good move, teach, good move. Tina got her start on the stage, alongside Betty Davis, no less, in Two's Company, before hitting the big screen with God's Little Acre. Just as she made her film debut, the National Art Council declared her the world's most beautiful redhead, a judgment we can all pretty much agree on. Now with the eyes of the world on her, Tina even landed work all the way in Italy. Also of note is her 1964 appearance alongside Bob Denver. No, not on Gilligan's Island. Not yet, anyway. That same summer, the two were in the beach party film For Those Who Think Young and they'd be hanging out on a beach together for years to come. Did Tina Louise do her own singing on Gilligan's Island? Do you remember that time Ginger had dinner with the latest star? Or that time she went on vacation with such and such director? With Ginger's glamorous background, she's already seen and done some pretty impressive things, from working with a magician to helping the professor with the latest experiment. She's also heard belting out some swell harmonies. The biggest moment that comes to mind was in the episode called Don't Bug the Mosquitoes. And while Dawn Wells had a voice dubbed in for her, Tina Louise did sing her own part. Yes, she is a very musical person in her own professional life. In fact, by the time Tina landed her ginger, she had built a musical talent over a decade. Her debut album, It's Time for Tina, came out in 1957. The record's been reissued on CD twice and has snazzy tracks like Tonight is the Night and Tina's version of I'm in the Mood for Love. I'm in the mood for love. The one Bob Hope once called a showstopper. So while Jane Mansfield was an early choice to play Ginger, casting definitely made the right choice in choosing Tina Louise. Did Dawn Wells get along with Tina Louise? In a show with not a captive audience so much as a captive cast, it can be easy for people to tread on each other's toes. Most of the guys had pretty distinct territories, but Gilligan's Island boasted two radiant leading ladies, thanks to Dawn Wells and Tina Louise. Throw in their very contrasting personalities, and it's a recipe for volcanic tension. Turns out, some of that tension was very much real, just in a slightly different form. No matter what, Tina and Dawn couldn't get away from the famous Ginger vs. Marianne debate. Dawn Wells even has a shirt that says just that, Ginger or Marianne, the ultimate dilemma. The actors were aware of this rivalry, and they also knew who usually came out on top. As Wells put it, quote, You can go anywhere and say, Ginger or Marianne, you don't have to say what show it is, everybody gets it, and I always win. Glad you can read my mind. I'm too much of a lady to say those things. <laughs> but here's the thing. Even with the show's inherent tension and a fan-fueled rivalry, T 
Tina and Dawn got along pretty great. Tina Louise holds family in the highest regard and outright called Wells part of her family. Just like family, they often had dinner together. When Tina was a fresh newlywed, Tina found herself confronted with an intimidating problem. She did not know how to cook. And it was Thanksgiving. Yikes, you see the problem. So Dawn invited Tina along with her mom and she taught her a potato souffle recipe. Now that also spawned a new holiday tradition for the two actors, who I'd say worked together better than anyone else. Why was Tina Louise replaced on Gilligan's Island? Now we all know Gilligan's Island became a cultural icon, referenced and parodied in all sorts of ways, from other sitcoms to children's cartoons. But Tina Louise was not on Gilligan's Island from start to finish. And the popular story is that she didn't have a lot of love for the show or many of her castmates. The way Dawn Wells saw it, Tina sometimes thought she was the same as Ginger, who was pitched as Marilyn Monroe. And that got Tina kinda thinking. The show was all about her. Dawn kept her theory diplomatic, saying, quote, Tina thought she was a movie star, and I don't think she realized what it was that there were seven of us. She was never difficult. She was never part of the company, though. That's pretty tough when you've got a pretty tight ensemble like Gilligan's Island. Reportedly, Tina would sit apart from her castmates during rehearsals and never did on-set small talk. And so, famously and infamously, Tina left Gilligan's Island noticeably absent from the reunion movie Rescue from Gilligan's Island. She wanted big league movie fame, not slapstick TV stuff. She carried this so far when Dawn reached out to contact Tina, she ignored her. Tina's frosty way of addressing the show that made her famous and the crew left a very sour taste in her co-star Bob Denver's mouth. When interviewed and asked about the tension, he didn't want to outright confirm or deny anything because one thing Denver hated more than anything else was actors ragging on each other and their projects. He played it neutral and said, quote, The best thing you can do is overlook someone's problems. I don't believe in using someone's unprofessionalism to get my name in the papers. Well, the Gilligan's Island reunion films could have given her the best of both worlds, her most famous project and the film star experience, but she turned them all down. Tina admitted that if she was trapped and unable to leave, she would trade the beaches of Gilligan's Island for the skyscrapers of Manhattan, which is exactly where she would plant roots in the Turtle Bay neighborhood. Is Tina Louise married? Just about everyone in the world fell in love with Tina Louise even before Gilligan's Island. But who ended up winning her heart? That would be Les Crane, who she married in 1966. Now Crane's actually a very big deal in the world of radio and television interviewing. He would have five marriages, but this would be Tina's only one. However, the pair divorced in 1971. But while they were together, they appeared as a married couple in an episode of Love American Style. The two powerhouses combined to create another talented force of nature, their beautiful daughter Caprice Crane, who became a novelist and MTV producer. Her first book is dedicated to her mom, Tina. Likewise, child literacy has become a very important issue to Tina, who's become a champion of getting children to read. She often volunteers at public schools. Apparently, no one read to her when she grew up, and she wanted to encourage the next generation to learn about their world through the written word. Tina Louise comes off as a symbol of the glamorous movie star life, but in reality, she's very in tune to the goings-on of a very average life. Her dedication to her daughter drove Tina to slow things down in Hollywood, just enjoy average family life. She realized, quote, when I had her, I had to make a choice. Either I continued working or I took some time out to become a good mother and to give my child real security. When Tina returned to work in the limelight, she said everything felt way better than ever now that she had a better perspective on things. That new outlook on life gave Tina, who once rejected being a part of a beloved timeless classic, a piece of wisdom saying, quote, the best movie you'll ever be in is your own life because that's what matters in the end. Tina Louise went from ignoring everyone's calls and avoiding reunion movies 
to calling the whole thing fun and special. It also played into her volunteer work. The students had no idea who she was. One kid just called her a helper. And instead of channeling Ginger's inner diva, Tina Louise has become very secure being an anonymous helper. We're sincerely grateful for her newfound appreciation for the series because she is our last connection to it. As tragically, in 2020, we lost the beautiful and talented Dawn Wells. And now, Tina is the last surviving cast member of Gilligan's Island. Ginger Grant is one of the most iconic faces from Gilligan's Island and all TV shows ever. Now, you know what comes next. Marianne or Ginger? Who was your personal favorite? And let's do it on the other side too. Who was your favorite male actor on the show? Who would you want to be deserted on an island with? And also give me a book and movie you're taking there too. Get in the comments and tell us all things Gilligan's Island. Before you sail out of here, please give this video a thumbs up to show us some support and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a deep dive like this. And from all of us here at Do You Remember, I want to thank you very much for watching. <laughs> <laughs>